You know what the great thing about the Twilight Zone when it was in its uh, heyday, especially the ni 1962 season, uh, it kind of mimicked uh, the old-fashioned comic books with a little bit of uh, dark comedy built in. So today we're going to be talking about probably the darkest of the dark comedy episodes of Twilight Zone, To Serve Man. Now this is the 24th episode of the third season of TZ and is 89 overall. It originally aired on March 2nd, 1962 on CBS. Based on Damon Knight's 1950 short story of the same title, the episode was adapted by Rod Serling <coughs> and directed by Richard L. Baer. It's considered one of the best episodes from the series, particularly for the final twist. Well, you can pretty well figure out because the, the plot is given away kind of the first few minutes. What's great about this, the great Richard Kyle plays one of the Catamites, the aliens that are the center of this episode, with uh, also great performances by uh, Lloyd Bachter, who was always a uh, good value for his TV appearances, and of course the uh, young Susan Cummings. Searling's open narration goes like this, respectively submitted for your perusal, the Canamite, height a little over 9 feet, weight in a neighborhood of 350 pounds, origin unknown, motives, Darren hangs the tail for in just a moment we're going to ask you to shake hands, figuratively with a Christopher Columbus from another galaxy at another time. This is the Twilight Zone. So this, by 1962, this trope, like the day the Earth stood still, where aliens are coming to Earth, we don't know if they're benevolent or they're evil, war to worlds and all that, but this turns it on its head. Now in this one, a man named Michael Chambers lies in a cot in an otherwise empty locked room. A voice offers him a meal delivered through a small aperture in the wall, which he grimly refuses. Uh, the setting changes to several months earlier on Earth. The Canamites, a race of nine-foot-tall aliens, land on Earth as the planet is beset by international crisis. You have to understand, 1962, this episode was uh, shown before the uh, uh, where we almost went World War III with the, between the Cubans, uh, or Russians, and the Americans. As the Secretary General of the United Nations announces the landing at a news conference, one of the aliens arrives and addresses the assembling delegates and journalists using an AI-created voice. He states that his race motive is coming to work is to provide humanitarian aid by sharing your advanced technology that can easily and inexpensively solve on all energy and food shortages and prevent international warfare. After answering questions, he departs without comment and leaves behind a book in his language. Chambers, a cryptographer working for the United States government, uh, who is a person that can, you know, trying to break codes, is pressed into service to decipher it. International leaders express uh, wariness of the Canaanites' uninvited arrival of Earth, especially the Russians, but start to believe their claims of benevolence upon seeing their advanced technology at work. Paddy, a member of Chamber staffs, translates the title of the book as To Serve Man. Uh, we found out quickly this might be a double meaning. Further bolstering public trust in the Canaanites. One member of the race submits to polygraph monitored interrogation and is determined to be telling the truth. Now, the Canaanites... Delivering the prophets to turn their world into a utopia, transforming barren deserts into blooming fields, and each nation is giving an apprentice force field that leads to their virtual disbandment of all militaries. Humans soon began volunteering to travel to the Canaanites' home planet, which is described as a paradise, and the Canaanites set up embassies in every country on Earth and, <laughs> and weigh all passengers boarding their ships. Hmm. Even though chamber staff no longer have any real work to do, Due to the worldwide declarations of peace and the dissolution of the United States Armed Forces, Paddy continues our efforts to decode the Canaanite's book, while Chambers decides to simply enjoy the newfound paradise and signs up for his own trip to the Canaanite's planet. Sometime later, as Chambers is boarding a Canaanite uh, ship, Paddy pushes through the waiting line and shouts for him not to go. She has successfully translated to Sir Man and discovered this is not a book about American aid, it's a cookbook! Chambers tries to flee, but a guard forces him onto the ship and closes the hatch so he can lift off. And Richard Kyle turns around his arms and points uh, heavenward. Quite an effective scene. In the present, Chambers angrily throws another meal across the room where it is offered to him. A Canaanite picks up the food and encourages him to eat so he will not lose weight. Chambers will reluctantly do so, addressing the viewers directly to the ass weather. They, they have left dirt yet and remarking that the Canaanites will eventually cook and eat all of humanity in that universe. And it's kind of weird, uh, like Saran Wrap, I don't think it was very common at the time. Like it's a, I don't know if that was a product placement or not, but it's pretty effective. 
where he's eating like kind of a crushed up uh, muffin. Now, the closing narration, uh, the recollections of one Michael Chambers with appropriate flashbacks and soliloquy, or more simply stated, the evolution of man, the cycle of going from dust to dessert, the metamorphosis from being the ruler of a planet to an ingredient in someone's soup, is tonight's bill of fare from the Twilight Zone. See, it's a double-ended title, To Serve Man and To Serve Man. Now, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, the big plot hole. How the hell would he translate the book? There is no, uh, unless it was hieroglyphics, there's no a key language like the letter alphabet to really translate, but, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's science fiction TV. Now, Richard Kyle, we don't know many, how many Canamites he played because every scene, all the Canamites look alike. But it's kind of weird when he's making the speech, he's got his head turned, he looks like a Canamite that just had, you know, two ounces of marijuana. But um, what's kind of weird about this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Theodore Marcuse, a very good character actor, playing Citizen Grigori, I think it was a plant for the Russians because the Russians are, are a little bit more leery than the Americans are. And it's very effective in, in the short scene uh, he had. Now, uh, now, the arriving Katamite ship is shown as scenes extracted from the Daily Earth Stone Still with a different sound. The departing Katamite ship is shown as a scene extracted from Earth versus the Flying Saucers, also with a different sound. You were allowed to use what they call... Uh, uh, you know, structured visuals that were, that were on file. Now, TV Guide ranked the episode at number 11 of his all-time list of the 100 greatest episodes of all time and ranked the ending at the, the greatest twist of all time. I wouldn't say uh, uh, that big because the, the Howling Man's pretty strong, but it is it is pretty freaky because, you know, it's a cookbook and he's kind of waving. It's like, I'm on a, I'm on a, I'm a lunch ship. Time left for the episode among the top 10 Twilight Zone episodes. Rolling Stone named the episode first on its list of the 25 best Twilight Zone episodes. It's very, very good. It's not my number one because I'm a big fan, again, of uh, Time Enough at Last and, uh, you know, some of the uh, the more obscure, like, uh, although it wasn't a Twilight Zone episode, uh, Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge, uh, although it's not a Twilight Zone episode, I find that's a little bit better than this. But uh, Richard Kyle showed up at Star Trek, and that's where, uh, where it's uh, pretty big. Now, the episode is occasionally for a reference in popular culture, especially on The Simpsons, usually with the line, it's a cookbook or some variation thereof. References or parodies can be found in such television series as Futurama, The Simpsons, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, The Naked Gun 2.5, and, and Madagascar, uh, uh, which The Naked Gun 2.5, The Spell of Fear, featured a tongue-in-cheek cameo by Lloyd Bachner, who played, again, uh, Dr. Chambers in the 2018 episode. The comic strip Mark Trail and musical works by artists Nuclear Assault, Cal Decapitation, Mondo Puff, Mondo Puff, and ELP. A reference to the episode has been found its way into an under, unofficial emblem for a United States Air Force unit. Now, in uh, the 2020 Twilight Zone series, there's an episode called You Might Also Like This, which was, serves as a sequel to The Serve Man, featuring Academites and Avoided like the plague is, is not very effective. So why does this episode resonate so much with a lot of people? Well, here's here here it goes, ladies and gentlemen. It's like a backtrack episode where you get you're giving away the ending at the first, but you don't know it. And basically, it's almost like a documentary in sort of way. But this is uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis again. We're just a few months ahead. This was taken for laughs, but like I said, the Cuban Missile Crisis, but. If aliens do land on Earth, do we really know if they're going to be good or bad? There is no indication. That's the one of the biggest questions. You had a combination of two things, aliens and nuclear war. Because between 19... The rise of Khrushchev and the rise of what's it called the, uh, the conservative America, uh, I don't think if uh, Eisenhower was still in in 1962... Uh, we would not have had a nuclear war. It could have been close, and Nixon as well. But this episode really stands out because it's good acting. We all like Richard Kyle because, of, you know, James Bond series and different stuff. He's the, he's the most popular big man uh, of the, the series. And Ruck, uh, he played in uh, What a Little Girl's Made Of in Star Trek. Uh, pretty effective. The makeup in that and in this. And uh, there's different stories in Zickory's book and doctor uh, documentary books about... Uh, not documentary books, but anthology books about the history of Twilight Zone, talk about the makeup and how Richard Kyle, they could have done the episode without Richard Kyle being a very strong actor because he acted by not acting. It was tremendous. 
So I give this episode four and a half stars out of five. To me, it doesn't get five stars because some of the uh, human characters are weak. But the guy who did the uh, the voiceover, uh, I think it was a the actor and the man in the bottle. Actually, I uh, I have his collector signature Twilight Zone card in the house, and uh, again, it ranks to me as a top ten Twilight Zone episode. Put it this way: if you don't like aliens and you you you're you were born in uh, uh, in the late fifties and saw this as a seven year old, it'll stay with you forever. What do you call it? It's a linchpin uh, drab episode of the sixties. Very, very strong. So again, that's the story of uh, To Serve Man. To Serve Man. <laughs> I know the cannibal- cannibals across the world love this episode. If you like what you're doing here, we're a Twilight Zone review podcast. Let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share.